Welcome to the first episode of the Masters of Nonsense Presents Surviving the Horror, a miniseries dedicated to the Resident Evil franchise. In this series, a group of zombie film and game fans challenge themselves to watch the entire Resident Evil movie series in preparation for release of the new film, Resident Evil The Final Chapter, and the video game Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. We start our journey with the first movie in the series. The Resident Evil film series is loosely based on the Capcom survival horror video game franchise of the same name. The first film was released in 2002 from writer and director Paul W.S. Anderson, starring Mila Jovovich. At this time, video game fans were clamoring for the first great video game film adaptation of a beloved series. And now, the horror begins. You found yourself knee-deep in some nonsense. I'm Rob. Rob was first introduced to the Resident Evil series with Resident Evil 2 on the Sony PlayStation console. I'm Mike. Mike listens to the Resident Evil motion picture soundtrack during his workouts. And I'm Matt. Matt has loved Resident Evil since the summer of 1997. Yep, he's old. And those two sound like they've been chained up in a fucking cellar because uh, I had this brilliant idea that we would go ahead and watch all the Resident Evil movies in preparation for the new movie, Resident Evil, the final chapter to come out. And uh, this has clearly been pulling teeth with the two of them, but um, hey, what the hell? Figured why yeah, we not? Won't. We're not going to give so much background on how much he guilted us into this. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, I mean, this has been months and months of conversations and a couple of beatings that have gotten uh, done. That's why I feel like this. a zombie now. Yeah. And they smell like one, too. Yeah. <laughs> Matt hasn't showered since. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I figured let's just go ahead and start with the Resident Evil 1 movie. Um, this is actually a movie that Mike and I have, a, we saw it in theaters when it came out. I want to say it was probably like release week or something. And, um, you know, we had our own thoughts then that was 14 years ago. So here we are now we're approaching the end of that series supposedly. Um, and just figured why not take a retrospective look back at that film and the others in the series and go from there. I know, Matt, you, you had some thoughts as far as where this film fit in with everything else that was going on in pop culture. Why, thank you, Rob. Yeah. Uh, yes. So the thing is, back in 2002, there wasn't that many zombie films. And the weird thing about it was that year had Resident Evil, and on top of it, it had also 28 Days Later. And the weird thing is, is that zombies weren't the big deal at that time. You know, and well, like it wasn't as like big as it is today. And the Resident Evil games were cool because it was like, oh, you get to shoot zombies, and it's like this creepy mansion stuff like that. So when the movie came out, everybody was excited because it's like, oh, this is gonna be cool zombie action and stuff. And then you saw the first picture of the movie, and I was like, wait, what the fuck? There's no characters that like I remember from the games, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and the other thing is we all recently rewatched this, like seeing it, remembering it in the theater versus now. Like, what was? What do you think was the biggest difference? Oh my god, it was like everything. And the weird thing is that back in the or, like the like two thousand, I think they were going to make a movie with Bruce Campbell was going to be Chris Redfield from the first game, and George Romero was like thinking about uh, you know directing it, and that completely fell through. So now we got this and it is almost nothing like the game at all so now do you think that that's a bad thing or a good thing because when i look back at it i'm like you know what i kind of don't mind the fact that it's separate from the games because this was in retrospect this was i think the only movie that was completely outside of the the main storyline and it did its own thing then like all the other movies seem to get a little bit more of the Resident Evil feel thrown in there and characters thrown in. So for me, looking at it, I was like, back in 20, 2002, I thought, what the fuck? Where's like the cool mansion, not that weird mansion that's in that movie? Where's... Yeah, that's for a second in the movie. Right. 
where's Chris? Where's Jill? Where's Barry? Where's Wesker? Like, what the hell happened here? Like, this is all the things that I really wanted to see out of a movie. But at the same time, like, I don't know if they would have been able to do it justice then. Okay, I'll give you that, but this is my big thing, is that, okay, Resident Evil was never known for its, like, it's not Shakespearean acting, obviously, but they could have made, like, a really cool, serious story, and they, it's like, they could have had the creepy ambiance and made it, like, an actual horror movie. Like, the best example is in 2002, the Resident Evil remake came out, and even though, again, it did have, like, the bad voice acting and stuff, it had, it was a creepy game, you know? And I wish they translated that into the movie. Instead, the movie had, like, a post matrix like meta- everything was like metallic and too clean you know what i mean right there's barely any zombie murders i mean the fucking team in the beginning gets murdered by the lasers and i'm like wait what like what does that have to do with resident evil you know right now did you feel like they took this and they said we're need we need to make a zombie movie and if that's the case did you feel like that's different from what the games are yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, because zombies weren't making a huge deal at that time, you know? Like, it wasn't... I mean, there was zombie stuff out, but it wasn't like today, where now it's everybody loves zombies. So, I don't know, maybe they think they were thinking of it from a video game perspective. Like, you know, oh, we need to capitalize on making video game movies. Oh, look, here's the new thing that everybody's playing, you know? Right, because the one thing that I find interesting about the games is, at least the, the first game in particular, <laughs> that zombies were a thing. They were, like you know, obviously a big part of the the game, but it was almost like that was secondary to the fact that there was other weird shit going on. So it's like you had these zombies that are in the corridors and in some of the rooms, then all of a sudden you had these other weird-ass monsters attacking. But the difference is what was cool about the games is that you didn't know anything going in. It was a mansion, and it was this team that didn't know what the fuck was going on. Then later on you are introduced to, like, oh, there's a corporation. In this movie, it starts off, it's like, the Umbrella Corporation owns all this stuff. And in the beginning, it's like, oh, there's a mansion. Cool. No one says anything for, like, it's like it's just a weird, like, they throw it in your face instead of, like, slowly building up to it, you know? Right. What do you think, Mike? On well, the very beginning, it was the whole office setting. So I'm like, oh, it's Office Space 2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one remembers Office Space except for me, you, and Rob. Well, I'll say this for me being kind of more of a passive observer of the Resident Evil stuff, like watching Rob play and other friends play. I was initially confused because I thought it was going to flow with the game. So when these characters came up, I'm like, oh, that's, you know, that's Chris Redfield and there was some cop named Matt and like things like that. So I was a little bit thrown off because I thought, oh, aren't these the characters in the game? I remember actually... I thought so, too. ...turning to Rob and be like, oh, who who the hell are these people? He's like, I don't know. So. <laughs> well, the weird thing uh, is that... Uh, here, if I can go to my notes here for the beginning, is that no one says their names, but by the end of the movie, everybody knows their, each other's names, which is weird. No, well, and, not only do they know each other's names, but they're like lifelong friends, apparently. That's, I was <laughs> just about to say that! She, at the end of the movie, she's like crying. She's like, you know, I missed you, you bitch, when she thought Michelle Rodriguez <laughs> almost died. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you've known these people for fucking, like, three, and it's literally three hours in the movie, because it says, like, the little three-hour timer. But remember the part where the guy is on the the pipes there, and he's like, I'm going to kill myself. And they're like, no, please don't. That's like a five-minute fucking scene of them waiting for him to not kill himself. Here's, Here's my thing, that when I was watching that movie, I didn't know who was who at all, because all the guys had the same fucking haircut. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they fucking see the guy Matt, the fucking the 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 guy um from oh my uh, Logan Perfoy from Logan, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the love child of uh, Hugh Jackman, <laughs> <laughs> Doug Ray Scott. <laughs> yeah, it's like I mean they look like average like white guy thing with like brown hair, and it's like okay, really you couldn't get anybody else. And then the coolest guy, the the leader of the team, dies. I think it's like at the thirty minute mark from fucking lasers. And I'm just thinking, I, I, <laughs> I remember being in the theaters with Rob, and he's like, "Oh, that's the guy from Candyman." I'm like, "No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, that's <laughs> you think it's something different. You're thinking of Tony Todd. This guy's a different actor." Okay. The funny thing about that scene with the cube, um, not the cube, the the laser scene, is that they got that same exact thing from a movie called Cube, and it was like a low budget sci fi film where the beginning of the movie is like they're in this box and they have to get out, and that thing happens where like the 
like wires come through them and then like they start slowly start to fall apart so i'm like wow they're just ripping off of other b movies you know i will say though what was funny is that the dialogue up until that point sounded like a choppy video game <laughs> But there was no dialogue. No, but like, because like, what was it? like the the main guy, the the one, the leader who gets lasered. He was like, "Keep it tight," and it's like, well, you yeah. can't say that in one. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, then it's like report, and she's like, "What?" And he's like, "Report," and it's like, dumbass. You kind of know that they're like they all have amnesia from the fucking security system, right? Which well, is another fucking thing completely. The hive. Yeah. Well, here, wait, like, really? First thing when when the soldiers came into the mansion and like like burst through the windows and they're like about to shoot everyone and they're like yelling at Alice report report or whatever they came in with gas masks on knowing full well that there was a zombie outbreak that was going on in that building because that's a why viral they're... right so why the fuck did they take them gas masks off they're idiots that's why <laughs> like what oh, they... here's a Go ahead. Oh, wait, you get you know you continue because I got us a few things to say. Yeah, but like seriously, you're going into a fucking biohazard hive thingy. Why would you take the gas mask off? Because then you're okay. gonna fucking die. There's so many like um like bad scenes that come like not even bad scenes but like bad like uh, mis- movie mistakes. Like you know when the guy gets chopped up, right? You know with the cubes there. Yeah. If you notice. Like, you know how it starts, like, kind of halfway through the hallway? So, technically, it's going through other stuff. Like, you see nothing else gets chopped up. Like, the bag was right next to him, Mm -hmm. but it's still intact. And I'm like, didn't that get hit by the lasers? And I'm like, oh, it's fucking movie magic. That's where it is. Right. But the worst one, the one I picked out that really annoyed me was, you know, when Alice get Alice is the main character, Mila Jojovich, for anybody who's, you know, like, keeping count. Remember when she fights the dogs? Yeah. Remember that part? Okay. Yeah. Remember she blocks one of the dogs in the room, right? And it's like, you know, it's trying to get through and stuff. And then she, the, the dog she fights outside, she kicks one through the window. That was the same, like, room as the fucking other live dog. Why did the dog not try to attack her? Did they run out of dogs? I think you're overthinking this one. Yeah. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> well, my, anyway, my, um, my primary question was this: Do you remember the scene when they're first <laughs> figuring out that these people are dead, and it's the uh, they're in the lab that filled up with water, so everybody had drowned? Yeah, that was a scene where, like, you know, the, uh, Michelle Rodriguez is like poor bastards, and then like you know the eyes open and the hand comes up. Yeah, yeah. So before that, though, they were trying to like break into it, right, with like an axe or something. Yeah, and then yeah, the water started coming up. Yeah. yeah. So they hit like two holes of water streaming out, like a steady stream of water coming out. And for whatever reason, every single soldier decided to walk through that water <laughs> yes. as opposed to like just go about eight inches to the left and walk past it. Every yeah, one what, of them went through right. the water. Like, at that what rate, you might as well just start taking a drink out of that thing. Well, that's what and I was going to say. What about doesn't that fucking infect them at that point? Like. <laughs> Yeah, because another thing too is that she's the the computer says that you know a bite, even a scratch, will like infect you, and they get scratched a lot in this fucking movie. <laughs> oh my god! So it's like, we should have done a bite count on Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah. She, got, she got bitten like oh ten times. Okay, here's my other thing though. Like she's just a fucking lazy talker. So every single time she was yeah. talking, it was just annoying me. And then I'm just there, and I'm like, once she gets bit, I'm like, she's going to be even fucking lazier when she's talking. So nobody's going to understand the damn thing but she's saying. You have to appreciate that she mastered the art. You know how, like, Charlie Sheen emotes with his eyebrows? Yeah. She emotes by, like, looking up all the time. <laughs> yeah, but the thing that's weird, too, I, and this is going back to the beginning of the movie, when Alice, like, is walking around the mansion, right? It's like, okay, it, it's this whole building up part. But then all of a sudden, she meets the, the cop guy, Matt, right? Yeah. And at the same second, the fucking team comes in. There's no explanation of, like, why any of this is happening. You know, it's just like, it, it's they threw two story plot points in at the same time. And it makes no fucking sense. And it, like, kind of throws you off. Because then they, no one talks. The only thing fucking Michelle Rodriguez says is, blow me to fucking, you know, you want to talk about video game, like, dialogue. It's even worse than that. It's like pay-per-view dialogue, you know? Right. Looks like it kind of aged a little bit where it looks like a movie that would have been on, like, pay-per-view in the 90s, you know? Boom. 
Then all movies get on to pay per view in the nineties. <laughs> no, I mean you know like those theaters. No, no, no. I mean the direct like to pay per view movies, like the B movies, basically made by like all like the low budget. That's what it kind of looks like now, looking back at it. Which is really interesting because you would think if they're making a Resident Evil movie, especially in two thousand and two, that it should be a B movie. Like, oh yeah, but it wasn't a B movie in like the fun B movie way. It right, felt more right. just like a lazy B movie. You know, that's the problem. Like, that's the thing with the whole series too is that it's like. They do it in a lazy B movie way instead of, a, I mean, especially the first one. But it's still not a. I actually got to admit, it's not a terrible movie. You know, it's yeah. it's got its points. You know, that's that's what I was gonna say is that there there are some positives to it. It's nothing like it, definitely no way is this a award win, winning film at all. But there are some things that were kind of enjoyable. I actually okay. thought. Um, say it, Rob. I know what you're gonna say. Soundtrack. Yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack by Marilyn Manson, I thought was very cool. Same uh, it gave it gave it like a really cool feel to it. It, it. it to me, that's what made it feel a little bit of a step above what a B movie would be. Yeah, Even definitely. It still had a campiness to it. It just it had a creepy just aura to it that uh it was that like techno rock thing that was cool and i actually bought the soundtrack because i liked it. and it had some yeah. good bands on it like rammstein was on there yeah. and rob zombie wasn't he on there too uh i think that was that was the second one second one, or or second one. one. Okay. but metal okay. band was on there too but um okay <laughs> no but it, it was very cool it, and just it really set the tone for the the movie and how everything was coming together and like matt you mentioned like an industrial feel to it but it it at the same time, like I think that really hammered home that type of environment that they were trying to get with it, um, yeah. which was a little bit different from what you would expect. You know, with the creepy mansion type thing like this, it had creepy undertones to it, but at the same time, it made it feel a little bit more contemporary at that moment, um, which yeah. I thought was kind of cool. Um, for me, my personal favorite. I guess monster from the Resident Evil series is the liquor. So it was kind of cool to see that in movie form, even though it was really bad CG. Yeah. When it was the actual monster, when it was like a, an actual prop, it looked cool. Right. But when it was the, you know, when it was the CG, yeah, the CG, it did not age good at all. And when no. it's walking on the ceiling and it looked like I drew it. Yeah. <laughs> Also, it's funny when they have the computers, they take the computers out, and you can see, like, it looks like really shitty graphics. Like, today, it looked like the actual city of Raccoon, Man uh, Ra Raccoon City. Yeah. But in this, in this, it just looks like something from fucking, like, Second Life or something, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I'll say, for me, the soundtrack added a lot of value to it, too, and I don't know if it's because I enjoyed that soundtrack so much when it came out that rewatching it over the past few weeks, like, hearing that music again, it actually, like, made the experience a little bit more enjoyable and I can't tell if it was like the music or if actually the movie wasn't that bad. I didn't re actually remember much of the movie so it was almost like seeing it again for the first time. I remembered a couple of the like the toe kick that the dog gets and then you know the laser yeah. scene. Other than that I didn't really remember much of it so um, so I think something about the soundtrack helped me enjoy it a little bit more this time. Did you guys get when you went to the movies, you know how in almost every movie, even if it's a bad movie, you always get like the general audience reaction to like really cool shit that they didn't think? So for this movie, there was like three scenes. It was the toe kick. It was the part where the guy hits the with um, the glass with the, with the axe yeah. and a little piece comes out. Everybody was like, oh, shit. And then the last one was when, um, what was it? Oh, God, I had it right here in my notes. But there was another scene where it was basically like that oh shit moment. And I was like, really? This movie isn't really that good, you know? Wait, did you see this in theaters too? Yeah, I saw it in theaters. Okay. I saw it with my cousin in like Yonkers, I think, or something. Oh, okay. Because we saw it uh, in Yonkers as well. But um, I'm guessing that the other scene was probably the, the girl that was in that chamber that like all of a sudden that was the yeah. pop open. Yeah, that uh, Mike had that was referenced yeah. before. Yeah. Um, other things that I liked from it is that, you know, while it did steer far away from the games, there were some things that they kept in there that were, you know, kind of big staples for the game, or at least some of the games. So, like, Resident Evil 2 is, I can't say for certain if that's my favorite Resident Evil game, because 4 is very close as well. But um, just mm -hmm. having, like, a, the train sequence from there, because that's how the, the game, that the, was the movie ends, it's sort of 
very similar in tone to the way that Resident Evil 2, the game, ended. So it was cool to see that, especially bringing in the liquor as, like, the main boss of the movie. Which, um, you know, when you put that in a video game, it does sound like a secondary character when there's, like, bigger and stronger and faster or whatever monsters out there. But to put that at the forefront, it, it makes you feel like, oh, shit, if this were real and I had zombies and I had dogs and then I had this weird thing with its brain coming out, I'd be the mm-hmm. most scared of the thing with the brain coming out. So, oh, yeah. Cool. So it's kind of cool that they, they kind of toned it down and only brought in a couple of monsters uh, to really make you feel like, oh, shit, this is actually kind of scary. Rather than yeah, like, I like a plant that, yeah. monster and sharks and all that other shit that was in the other, yeah. the other games. I don't think you needed like too many things, but it was weird. And it's funny because this is something I actually disagree with with other movies. Is that I think they t- brought the zombies in a little too late. Because it's like, like I said, half the team gets killed by like the computer, you know. And yeah. I thought then all of a sudden it's like, oh, and by the way, there's zombies. You know what I mean? Like, like in this background. And then there's like that hour long of them shooting zombies. And then it's like the end, you know. Right. I don't know. It was just like it was a weird tonal mix, you know. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Well, one of the things that was kind of missing from the games was the fact of, like, horror in an in a yeah. overall sense. Because they're fucking, you know, special agents that have tons and tons of ammo on them. So they are blasting through rooms filled of, well, like, 40 or 50 zombies. Yeah. They never did that in the original games. Well, that that's was- what made the games great, you know? Right. Right, because like then in that sense, the zombie should feel like a threat, not just like you know a meat bag that you're shooting at. Exactly, I think that's something that even nowadays gets lost with a lot of zombie movies and zombie shows and stuff. Right. Where it's like everybody now just murders zombies just to murder them. But like when you played the original Resident Evil, especially you know, and same thing with Resident Evil Two, it was like yeah, you're a cop and you're a special forces guy, but you're alone. You have limited ammo, and it was cool. So you have a little bit to fight where it's not you're not helpless, but it's still even with that, you're still kind of fucked, you know? Right. Um, and then there was another thing I wanted to bring up. Just in general, I kind of felt like the zombies could have gotten a little bit more of a push here, and uh, they could have been a bigger threat. Um, yeah, because totally. at the same time, as as I was mentioning, it's kind of cool that you had those other monsters in there, but if there's 40 or 50 of these things, you should be terrified of the fact that there's 40 or 50 of these things. Like, oh, Michelle yeah. Rodriguez gets bit, and then she's fucking useless for the rest of the movie, because they're just dragging her along, and then she's slowly dying, like just let her die, you know? Like, she couldn't even aim her gun. Listen, she was pointless. Listen, they spent two and a half hours with her. She was very important to their lives at that moment. They needed well, her. When we talk about the... And I'm you just know, kidding, the, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you one thing. Remember that, though, when we talk about the other movies, because the reverse happens. Yeah. I noticed, and it's like, wait, w- w- that was weird, you know? <laughs> Did you, like... Can you tell, like, the parts that were ad lib though, from Michelle Rodriguez? Like, when she has her hand over the zombies, and she's squeezing the blood off, and she's like, you like that? You want some of that, huh? And I'm like, is that... Was okay. that a script? I don't know if you guys will remember this particular scene because I'm wondering was this ad libbed or was this part of the script? Because either way, it's a, it's hilarious. Okay, Which, remember her friend who was like the other soldier guy, yeah, who was like they're the ones who start shooting everyone. You remember when he gets pulled in through the yeah. elevator or the yeah. door or whatever, and everyone starts eating him? Okay. Yes. Do you remember they then try to pull her out? to get her away from all the zombies and the doors close and then the guy who was like the computer geek guy who ended up becoming super important for whatever reason he turns around and just decks one of the zombies in the face (laughs) (laughs) do you guys did you guys notice that no i have to rewatch it for that i actually rewound it because i thought he punched one of the soldiers i'm like wait why did he turn around and deck (laughs) some what is matt and stun silent i have no (laughs) idea Oh, man. Well, while we're talking about Matt, um, one thing I will say is that, like, as the whole story oh, played out... Yeah. Like, Wait, can you guys hear What? You could hear me, right? I didn't, no. like, turn into a zombie. <laughs> Sounds like you're dying over there. Well, I'll go on because nobody else heard you. So, um, while we're talking about Matt, um, the character of Matt, not not the nonsense master Matt. <laughs> not, the ca- not the nonsense character. Yeah. Um... He, I guess, with the whole story, I, I have in my notes that he was the he was the blame for everything that happened here, because like he was like a super hippie or something like that. 
the so trillion what, dollar group. Stop the what? He was trying to stop the corporation. Yeah, well, just mind your own business. Because had that not happened, then we wouldn't have had these films. Well, he didn't. He didn't even talk for the first. Four. Matt, we're losing you. Yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh Matt. no! Wait, what's Five. that? Bite? What's that bite mark on you, Matt? <laughs> Oh, I, man. I think, I think door, the door shut on Matt. Well, it's yeah. funny too because like you would think he would say something, <laughs> like he just kept quiet the whole movie. Yeah, you gotta yeah. let it slip yeah. that like you know, hey, this is gonna be a big problem. We gotta save you, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's weird. That's coming through on Matt's end. <laughs> It's weird because when he started watching these movies, he told me he wasn't feeling good. <laughs> Apparently, this is Bobby Cow, too. Yeah. Matt's in the slaughterhouse right now. <laughs> wait, 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 guys, did you hear that? Hello? What? Guys, there's, there's people outside my house. Yeah. And they're groaning. I don't know what they're doing out there. Go, go out there with a ham sandwich. See what they, <laughs> see how friendly they are. Should I throw? Should I throw my cat out the window and see if they, uh, they'll eat her? Well, now we're gonna get a call from the ASPCA. So thanks. <laughs> uh, what did you guys think of the uh, little British girl? The uh, what the hell's her name? Oh, oh yes. Okay. This this, this part bothered me a lot. So. They, her whole idea was that she was going to shut down the whole place and kill everyone, right? Yeah, sound you idea. Know? Right, because that's her uh, way to... So, before, you know... What the hell? <laughs> so, <laughs> so she, she's shutting the whole place down. She's going to kill everyone, right? Yeah. And I think this is more of, like, watching it now. They basically cut a deal with her and convince her to let some of them go. Yeah. What type of computer AI has that capability of negotiation, you know? That, I think, is the true horror. Well, eight-year-old girls could do that. Right. But you would think, like, let's just, you know, it makes sense. Shut the whole place down. Kill everyone. Yeah. Fine. But then when she's like, oh, okay, yeah, we could we could cut a deal here. That's actually terrifying. Yeah, but don't you realize it was the beginning of the 21st century and technology was way beyond our capability? Yeah, but it's also, well, actually, doesn't that line up with uh, Skynet, too? So Yeah, sort of. So basically, just don't. Don't trust eight-year-old girls, especially when ones with British accents. Yeah, those are always suspect. It's like don't trust a, a blonde-haired guy with black roots. What? You mean a guy with highlights? No, a guy with blonde hair, but his roots are black. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, before the fucking zombies came outside my house, I wanted to let you guys know that the elevator scene was a nod off to George Romero's Day of the Dead. Oh, no, Dawn of the Dead, I'm sorry. The original Dawn of the Dead, because that happens. The elevator's all open, and the guy gets sucked into it. <laughs> We're I like literally that. having some technical difficulties with Matt here. Matt sounds like Wait, the British guys... girl from the movie. Wait, really? I, what, am I coming out like a robot? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, wrong, wrong series. Yeah. yeah, that's really fucking funny. Yeah. Wait for the Terminator series that we do. <laughs> and thankfully, that one has like a, I think, one movie less, right? I don't think so. <laughs> 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 do we count the Christian Bale one too? Oh God, I guess we have to. Although the TV show is good, but so Can we get back uh, to Resident Evil, please. Um, are you going to talk clearly for us now? I, I'm trying to fix this. I think the fucking zombie. <laughs> You're just yelling my at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> They're chewing on my freaking computer. Yeah. <laughs> What's with the zombie cow? I think we lost Matt again. God damn it. <laughs> so I will say having seen this again, it wasn't uh wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, unfortunately, I started watching the uh, the next movie in our little series here, and it's like, oh boy, this is going to be rough. So yeah, I'm actually mo most looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the next 
movies because from my personal opinion i've actually watched all of them um more recently and that this one stood out as being one of the better uh movies out of the series i'd probably put it at number one and then there's actually a close second but um yeah it was just i I, I can't can't wait to hear what the close second one is yeah and then uh one of the other big highlights for me was the fact that this one ran an hour and 40 minutes including credits which means that it actually put itself at my maximum of an hour and a half of actual movie time which is perfect yeah, I'll, Rob, this whole project has surprised us because it's like, it means you have to watch movies. And at the time, I didn't realize that they met your 90 minute limit. So, yeah. Yeah, I think all, all of them hit that. Yeah. They all do. I, I tracked each one of them just to make sure before I even thought about doing this type of project. So, um, but from my recollection, this is actually the longest in the series. So <laughs> it actually gets shorter, which oh makes it God. a little bit better. Oh, it's, oh, the thing that's going to scare me is these shorter movies are probably going to seem longer. So, <laughs> yeah, so they already any, do. Yeah. Any other closing thoughts from you guys about Resident Evil One, the movie? Well, not Resident Evil One, but Resident Evil, the movie from two thousand and two. Well, I got to say that probably of the two movies I saw, uh, the first one is the better one. So, but it's okay. you know, it's all right. Yeah, for me, I, I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was... I think I had very negative expectations rewatching this because I haven't seen it in a long time, but um, I have to say I actually did kind of enjoy it. You know, even though it had its bad elements, but I thought it added to the, the feel of it, make it a little cheesy in, in, in its own horror movie way. So um, I'm setting myself up for future disappointment, but at least with this one, I enjoyed it. So. And then the one thing that I will add, like I said, I actually enjoyed this one more than I thought I would. Um... I do have to say that I think, and in future movies in the series, I think this comes out um, as bad as these movies are. I think Mila Jojovich actually does a very good job as like that action hero um, as the series progresses. And I think that this was kind of a good introduction for her character, even though I feel like everything else kind of falls flat around her. But I, I think that she did a pretty good job here. Yeah, she definitely plays it like completely straight. That's the thing. And she goes all in. Yeah, but the last thing I'll say though, did you notice all the fucking Alice in Wonderland references they do? And the worst part is when they're fucking showing the cure. It's a white rabbit they're doing it on, and her name's Alice. Ah, oh. and they go into like they're basically going underground, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? A white rabbit? Well, that's well, they, they, I didn't catch that. If they call the the hive the rabbit hole instead, then you know. <laughs> they would have really beat us over the head with that motif. <laughs> yeah, and there was a hive and no bees, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is my last question for you, Rob. Yeah. So, do you have some sort of, like, and I mean this with all due respect, obviously, because you're a happily married man, but at the time, did you have, like, a weird crush on Mila because she, you know, was the embodiment of the Resident Evil series, and that was important to you? No, I will say that from the beginning, I absolutely hated her because I felt like it was such a deviation from what I wanted from the movie series. Um, you know, as a God, I don't know how old I was, but um, like a still like an early teenager or whatever. I was like, I want my Resident Evil movies. I want them to be Resident Evil. I don't want them to be anything else. Oh, now that I remember we took you for your birthday to see that. So you would have turned 15. There you go. So uh, I probably should not have been in there because it was an R-rated movie, but um, at the same time, it was just so, back in the beginning, it was so different from what I wanted from the movie. Um, now I have a little bit more of an open mind to these types of things, so to me, it's a little bit better than I expected, but uh, to answer your question, no, I hated her. Well, so you, wouldn't, I, you wouldn't say that you're missing her already then, right? No. Oh, that's bad. You like what I did there, didn't you? Yeah. The last thing I will do, say, though, is that Rob was always the OG with zombie. He is zombie Rob. I am zombie Rob. And Resident Evil, it's Rob. That was all I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you cut out then. <laughs> you want to repeat your lines so then you can cut out again? Yeah, right. 
What? What I just said? Yeah, I had no idea what you said. Oh, I said that you're the only... We heard, we, I said you were the OG of of zombies, like zombies. We could have cut that out. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, gentlemen, one movie down, four more to go. Yep. Good luck. And uh, Rob, I hate you. Thanks for guilting me into this. I, know, I hate you too, Rob, for this. Yeah, I hate both of you.